Um, the Freedom Caucus put a statement out yesterday saying, hey, they don't really want a CR, but we already know that McCarthy's negotiating that. McConnell's already called for it. They're not going to do anything. Walk us through appropriation CR. What happens, Matt, when you guys get back? A whole lot of spending, I will tell you. Uh, a whole lot of fighting is going to take place. Uh, we could see this train coming down the track quite some time ago, any of us that were being honest with ourselves. After McCarthy negotiated the increase of the debt ceiling to date certain January of 25, uh, our leverage, the, the House Republicans' leverage, was eliminated for the next 20 months. And I knew at that point that we were going to be dealing with another CR and omnibus and started discussing it with my colleagues. Um, the reason being that we were promised the 12 appropriation bills. Your listeners know that's how you properly fund government, the 12 bills that actually lay out what you're going to spend money on and how much you're going to spend it on to fund the federal government. A continuing resolution is just that. It continues spending at the current levels on policies that were currently passed. Why in the world would I support a continuing resolution that funds at levels that I voted against on policies that I voted against? So I've been very clear. I am not going to, uh, to support a t continuing resolution. We need to pass the appropriation bills. That is what Congress is charged with, to properly fund government in a transparent, uh, responsible manner. And, and leadership has known this for many months nine months. They've known it for years. That's how you fund it. They just haven't done it for the last four years. If we are going to pass a continuing resolution to fund government at the current levels on policies that we voted against and, and set the table for an omnibus at the end of this year, what is the difference between Speaker Kevin McCarthy and Speaker Nancy Pelosi? That's how the Democrats operate it. And, and I will not support that. Okay, so we both know that your speaker um, and leadership is not taking your point of view. They're going to do a CR, uh, so they're going to undercut everything you just said. So then, in order to get the votes to pass it, he'll have no choice but to go to Hakeem Jeffries. Then what happens? See, this is, this is the problem. We saw this in the debt ceiling. When the debt ceiling package that we originally put together, John, a lot of us worked extremely hard and, and, and sincerely in a sincere effort to make sure that we froze spending, clawed back the, original, the uh, 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 additional revenue that was still available at the federal level for things that hadn't been spent for COVID and the IRS agents and the uh, uh, school uh, redistribution loan program, all of that, so, and then uh, increase the debt ceiling by just a small amount so that we could continue to work on, on clawing back uh, different regulations and policies that the Biden administration had done for, for the last two years. Okay, When that came to the floor, that all of us had worked on, 218 Republicans voted on it, passed it, sent it to the Senate. Before the ink was dry, that's when McCarthy went to the president and started negotiating against us. And, and so the final product that he ended up with, that wasn't, that wasn't a, a uh, if you will, counter offer from the Senate, our bill, it was a whole new piece of legislation and he formed a new coalition which included 169 Democrats and only 145 Republicans in order to pass the debt ceiling bill. Uh, this is the type of coalition that he is willing to uh, put together in order to pass this continuing resolution again. There's no doubt in my mind. You can always buy a Democrat vote. Let's, let's be real about this. You can't buy uh, principled Republican votes, but he, it's a lot easier. Uh, it's not cheaper. It's not cheaper for the American people, but it's easier to buy Democrat votes than it is to earn Republican votes. Well, he's going to have to go to Hakeem Jeffries again he's to, to bail him out. And then, uh, you know, we'll see what level of accountability he has. But uh, nothing is going to change, Matt, as you know. You guys are fighting, but Mac McCarthy's already, in, in my, my view, my opinion, is he's already cut a CR deal. 
I want to get to um, Jim Jordan yesterday uh, coordinated, uh, has started an inquiry into whether Fulton County DA Fannie Willis coordinated with federal officials. Is this real? Does it have any teeth? Where is it going? Uh, that I'm not sure of. I, I hope I hope we can expose the um, the terrible bias that has been demonstrated throughout all of our DOJ, throughout all of the country, um, all the charges that have been rolled up against uh, President Trump. I mean, the, our nation right now is at a very, very critical point, John. Uh, we, we hear that a lot. It's thrown around a lot. It, it has become cliche, but it, it truly is. When you take the president and uh, his cabinet members and you you try to arrest them, you book them, you give them mug shots. I mean, these are Stalinist tactics that the Department of Justice has taken on. And by some low level prosecutor down in Georgia, we've seen the bias from the prosecutor up in New York. We've seen, you know, the, these these venues that are, are voting in, in Washington, D.C. They're trying to uh, hold the trials there where the president has zero chance of getting a fair trial where you've got 96 percent of the population that has voted for Democrats. This is a really, really big problem. And, and I think everybody across the nation better stand up and call their representatives and, and say, we have got to stop this. Or guess what? You could be next. And if they can pick up the, the former president of the United States like that, what are they going to do to the common man on the street? I mean, I had 20 armed IRS agents, full body armor show up at a gun store in Great Falls, Montana to pick up uh, what was supposed to be tax records. And they were like stormtroopers. They ended up taking 13,000 what they call 4473 forms that had personal identifying information about people that purchased firearms in that store. But yet, it has no information about the value of the gun or the type of gun that was purchased so the IRS is not supposed to have these forms, okay? But yet they took it because now they've got information on 13,000 people that tried to purchase firearms. What are they doing with that information? Uh, one has only got to believe that they're creating a list, John. This is not, this is not tin full hack uh, theories. This stuff is happening. 